what is happening at the back of the eye. For the majority of our lives, thankfully, we see good pictures of the world. But 25% of the population over 65, that macular central region starts to deteriorate. What we're trying to do is look at whether we can replace the cells which are lost in that middle layer, in that dry form. And can we actually replace the cells in the wet form as well? Because the reason you get the bleed is because the cells have died as well in the wet. So the London project in 2007 set out a stem cell project to replace the middle cells. Could we replace those cells? And before we did that, we had to get some evidence that getting cells, new cells into that area, may actually be beneficial for a patient. So we used the patient's own cells. So I'm going to show you a video. So this is the actual operation we did. So he had that middle layer in the macula die. So what we decided to do was an operation where you laser out some of that middle layer in the peripheral part of the eye, that bit of the eye that's mainly used for seeing in the dark. So there we are, lasering it out. We're taking the top layer off and we're going to put it in under the macula. Now this was a huge operation. It's a two-stage operation. You have to remove the cells from the eye and then put them under the eye. And it takes about three hours. You then have to put oil in the back of the eye to push everything back down. And then 12 weeks later, you have to reoperate on the eye to take the oil out. So there we are placing it under the macular region. So you've got that top layer, the seen part of the eye, and now the RPE that we've put in underneath it. Donald had that operation. And when he came in, he could not see the big A on the eye chart. If, and it wasn't available at the time we did the operation for Donald, if he had been given that drug, because it was a bleed that he had, then at best he would have got a three-line improvement. That operation got Donald back to 612. And in fact, uh, nearly 40% of the patients who had that operation regained their driving license. But the proof was, if we get, stem, if we get RPE back under that retina, we can save people's vision. We can stop people going blind. But we can't do it in that way. We cannot hold up a surgery for three hours when you've got a clinical population as big as nearly 700,000 in the UK. So we set out in 2007 to create those cells in a dish, put them on a patch and be able to transplant it into under the eye in an operation that would take no longer than a cataract operation which takes 20 minutes. So we gave ourselves a big, big task. So first of all, where are we going to get the stem cells from? We looked at many, many places to try and get stem cells. But the only one which would allow us to get them was a five-day-old fertilized egg. So it's an embryonic. It's this area here is where those stem cells reside. That area is known as the inner cell mass. Every single cell in our body comes from that, that cell. So we said, OK, can we make an eye cell from it? And the answer was yes. On the left, you actually see cells from a 17-year-old eye, that middle layer, that carpet of cells you'll see two distinct properties. One is it's black, and the second is it has a crazy pavementing shape to it. It's called cobblestone. And on the right is what we can get the stem cells to turn into, which is exactly the same. It's an RPE eye cell. It's black, it has the same morphology, and if we go in and look at all the proteins, they're all there. Was that problem solved then? For, unfortunately not, because one of the problems is those cells sit on an underlay, if you want to call it, an underlay before you put the carpet down. 
that underlays in biology terms is known as a membrane. And that membrane, in its own right, because of age, has deteriorated. So we have to come up with our own underlay. So we did. We engineered an underlay. We put the cells on it. They grew on it. And we managed to get them to remain on that as a carpet. So now we have a patch of cells. So this, in cartoon form, is the operation which will be initiated April, May of this year in a group of patients in Moorfields. So you make an incision in the, the eye, you detach the retina, you make a small incision, and the patch is placed into that bled and then it's pushed down by using gas and air. That operation took us 30 minutes. So it really could be an outpatient procedure. And in fact, that procedure is a standard, what we call vitreal retinal surgery, and nearly 70% of patients would have that procedure performed on them while they were still awake. We were using human embryonic stem cells. We've now done something spectacular for which two guys actually won the Nobel Prize for. I can take a piece of your skin and turn back time. I can turn it back into a stem cell. Is it really just a fantasy that you're gonna be able to do regenerative medicine, use cells? No, because of the cost benefit. <coughs> We operated on 40 patients nearly 10 years ago. Of those, it cost us £160,000, and that wasn't to the NHS, that was to the London Project. <coughs> it cost £15,000 to keep someone blind. That's a WHO figure, World Health Organization figure. 16 patients recovered, <coughs> and this is out of date by two years, they're now 10 years cost to the NHS would have been £160,000 for 40 patients. The saving for those 16 <coughs> that, <coughs> that have lasted longer than I'm going to last um, for um, 10 years is um, £2 million. That's on 40 patients. We're now working with a Japanese company to produce the patches 400 quid. <coughs> One injection in Lucentis is £1,200 and it's nearly £15,000 a year for the rest of the life. This would be a one-off treatment of 400 quid for the rest of your life. There's a benefit there I think. <coughs> <coughs>